Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. God bless you. We just finished the Bible study and I hope you was blessed by that. Don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. You can get me on Facebook, you can get me on Twitter. I hope everybody's okay. Thanks for all your support and all your encouragement. Me and the guys really appreciate it, so thank you very much. Why don't I just make a quick video? Uh, Mike, uh, Brother Mike's been telling me the debate that I had with Lamin uh, Muhammad uh, that uh, on that debate about is the Quran or the Bible the Word of God, some Muslims have noticed that I've quoted some Islamic text uh, of the Quran that are not in the Quran and that they're, they're all over it and they're getting excited about that. A couple of things about that debate. We come, we travel all the way uh, from Manchester to to the U uh, to London. It takes four to five hours. We go from two. We set off at two o'clock in the morning. We get the coach at three o'clock, and then we travel down. We get there for eight o'clock. We don't have much of a break, maybe an hour, and then we're in the park. And then we're debating and talking. By the time it gets to the afternoon, I'm tired out. I'm really tired out. Okay. So that's number one. So it, it, it's not fair to say, oh, he's quoted a few verses in the Quran that are not in the Quran. Because I'm, I'm tired. You can see that in the video. Okay, so when I'm tired, I'm not at my best. Okay. Secondly, I, I like to do scholarship. I spend many, many hours doing scholarship, right? Many, many hours. And I bring that scholarship to the park very few people, no one really wants to engage with it. Lamin, Lamin, Mohammed, he doesn't really want to engage with it. I think he just stumbled across me and thought, oh, there's nobody to debate, I'll debate him. But generally he doesn't want to debate and engage with the scholarship that I do. The Muslim Dawah teams down there, they, they don't want to engage with the scholarship. I spend hours and hours and hours doing research. They don't really want to engage with the scholarship that I, I bring down. So, so what what, what, what I'm trying to say there is I bring all this scholarship down I have papers tons of papers I have no proper table or anything to put my papers on so I'm, I'm the papers are not in order because I've got to get different papers at different times and I didn't even know he, he was going to come and have a debate with me so I didn't, I didn't even know it would be on that topic so I've got to shuffle my papers, get my papers together. They're all mixed up, okay? As they're all mixed up, there's distractions going on. We had people uh, shouting behind us. Uh, we had people talking here and there uh, on both sides. But I don't find that easy. When, I, when I'm, I'm doing really solid scholarship, I like peace and quiet. And if there are people talking around me, people moving, it distracts me, so when I'm reading text, I'm going to get some of the text wrong because I'm distracted. I'm trying to do proper scholarship, but I haven't got the environment to do a formal debate because the environment is people are moving around. And you tend to find when it's a Muslim via Christian, there's a lot of distraction going on. Uh, you find that with Muslim debates. Whereas... Uh, sorry, when, when, when a Christian is debating a Muslim, you'll find that there'll be a lot of distractions, okay? And um, so that, that's, the, that's the next point. The th third point, uh, uh, to, to be fair, there was distraction on both sides. And I, I just like people to be still. Let me get my scholarship out. But if there's lots of talking and distraction, I can't do it. I, I just can't get the accuracy of what I've brought when I've got all that distraction. And there was a lot of distraction, people shouting at the back, people walking up and down doing tango or whatever. And it was very, very difficult. So I'm going to read verses out of context, uh, verses, miss verses, misquote verses, etc. wrong sometimes, all right? But it doesn't take away the basic arguments that I'm making uh, concerning what I'm saying. The other thing as well, number four, is the scholarship that I was giving was far ahead of what the Muslims are used to. And so, because I was rushing some of the things that I was saying, I would have stumbled on the words and stumbled on 
some of the reading of the word, reading of the Quranic verses. That's the other thing. Some of the scholarship was far in advance of what the Muslims are used to. And secondly, sometimes when I say things, I'm rushing it because I'm getting so much information, so much scholarship, that I'm going to stumble on one or two verses of the Quran that are not correct. But it doesn't get away from the fact that the vast scholarship that I've been bringing needed to be dealt with and was not dealt with by this guy. And then finally, I need my glasses. I didn't have my glasses on. I do need my glasses now when I'm debating. And I didn't have my glasses on, so sometimes I'm going to read the Quran verses wrong if I've not got my glasses on and I'm being rushed to say things. So those are five reasons why all this uh, Muslims going over the debate saying, oh, he's got a few verses wrong, are not legitimate. Basically, in the debate with this Muslim gentleman, he kept quoting contradictions and contradictions of one point, one point. I'll quote contradictions in the Bible, contradictions in the Bible. What I did is I came at the Quran and criticized the Quran from a number of scholarly points of view. I came looking at ancient texts before the Quran, what the Quran had borrowed. I looked at multiple texts. It was never dealt with by this gentleman. I looked at the Sanam manuscript and the interpolation of the top of the writing. It was never dealt with by, by this gentleman. I looked at various manuscripts, uh, uh, top copy manuscripts and number other manuscripts and, and the textual criticism of these manuscripts never dealt with by this gentleman. I dealt with other textual criticism issues about the Stoning verse, never dealt with by this gentleman. Multiple faceted scholarship from various angles on the Islamic Quranic text, never dealt with by this gentleman and not dealt with by these people who were picking holes about one or two verses that I've missed because I haven't got my glasses. Hello, lots of distraction. Hello, tired. Hello, you see? So they're not dealing with all the scholarship that I threw in that debate. And I made a number of uh, valuable, important comments in that debate. For example, Muhammad assassinating people, uh, Muhammad stoning uh, people, uh, Muhammad um, assassinating people, uh, Muhammad marrying his adopted son's wife. I made a number of arguments that were never addressed by this Muslim apologist and has not been addressed by the Muslim community. So there was a lot of scholarship going on in that debate and the Muslims are trying to get away from that scholarship by saying, oh, he, he quoted a few verses uh, of the Quran wrong. There are some of those verses in the Quran that he's quoted. Well, I, had to, I didn't have my glasses. I was very tired, lots of distraction. I'm going to get a few wrong. But I challenged him on some of the verses that he quoted of the Bible. I tried to deal with some of them. But he never tried to deal with anything. He never tried to deal with anything that I said in any way. And uh, at the end of it, the man cheated. At the end of it, uh, he cheated. He went on, I gave him five minutes and he went on after the five minutes for ages and ages and ages. And I had to challenge him on that. And, I, and I, pretend, I wasn't crying, I was pretending to cry. I was causing drama because I wanted to show that this guy was cheating, okay? And he was cheating. He went over his five minutes. Now there, is no, there has been a, uh, another Islamic channel that have not put the bit where he's cheated. So I admire that channel because they've just put the debate and people can make their own mind up about that debate. But I tend to find, I find this with internet atheist, I find this wherever I go, I'm not the greatest of debaters, I'm not uh, that really intelligent, I'm just of average intelligence. But when I was at university, when I was at sem theological seminary, they taught us to do good scholarship. And you will find that whenever I do a topic, I go into it, I study the opponents and I study in depth. And because I study in depth, my adversaries, the atheists 
and the Muslims have never been able to challenge me and deal with me because they don't want you to know that there can be arguments given against them. Okay? So I'm not the cleverest, I'm not the greatest of debaters, but I do know how to do good scholarship. I do know that I will research the topic, I'll research it in depth. When I go into a debate, I'll have the available information on my side and my opponent's side. And so what you tend to find is Muslim apologists and atheist apologists don't want to dance with me because they know that in a debate, good scholarship will be presented and it will be difficult for them to overturn that scholarship. Okay, so that's where it is. So, um, I, I love to debate, I enjoy debate, I enjoy doing the scholarship, but very often it's a waste of time me doing the scholarship. I, I spend many hours studying the Quran, many hours studying the topics that I debate, and, and sometimes it's a waste of time because my opponents, uh, they don't want to debate, they don't want to get involved in debate, and the reason is because they know that they, 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 they're intellectually dishonest because they know if they come up against me they will be challenged and they don't want to be challenged and they don't want to be seen in their communities whether it, whether it be atheist or whether it be Muslim they don't want to be seen in their communities to be challenged so I, I, I just say to Muhammad Hijab and Hamza and Mansoor and, and, and Muslim apologists out there Muhammad uh, um, uh, Muhammad, the guy I debated, that I'm always available to debate. But I like to do formal debates, I like to do debates on a professional level, and I like to do it in a scholarly way. And unfortunately, when you're down at Hyde Park, it's very difficult to do good scholarship down there, because there's lots of distraction, and um, it's very, very difficult. And I've tried to be professional in my conduct down at Hyde Park, I've tried to... Uh, present uh, good scholarship and to be honest um, the vast majority of the work that I brought, brought down to Hyde Park the vast majority from my first debate with Shamsi right through uh, the last year and a half I've done a number of debates 99% of those debates the Muslim apologists have never come up to scratch because they've never ever dealt with the arguments and the scholarship that I brought. So there we are. I'm open to debate on university campuses. I'm open to be debate uh, formally uh, on various platforms. I'm open to debate at Hyde Park. But I would love to do it in a scholarly manner without any distractions, with fair timing. So the people don't go over their time, but they stick to their time rather than try to cheat and where I can use my glasses where I can be relaxed and where I can focus on the work that I'm doing uh, so that's my response to uh, Lamin Mohammed uh, the debate that I did with him I think that I, I did a good debate with him I think I gave him so much scholarship that there is the, that it would take weeks for the Muslims to actually answer those things that I've said and uh, he didn't give anything but, if, but just ratted off old so-called contradictions that the Muslims bring up. And he didn't bring any decent scholarship of any repute whatsoever to the debate. And he didn't try to deal with me in any way. So there we are. That's my reply uh, to these uh, to Lamen uh, Muhammad and uh, his detractors who were trying to uh, pick away at the debate that I did. It was a good debate from my side. I presented solid scholarship from many angles. It was not dealt with. And if I had been given a, a proper platform where I could have a table to put my papers down, it would have been even worse for him because I would have it organized. I would have my glasses out. I would have peace and quiet so I can focus on what I'm doing and it would have been even more devastating for him and the Islamic community. So I hope that's been a help to you. And uh, please, um, Muslim apologists out there, I'm just asking, 
to be honest, to be fair, and, and to be gentlemanly like, and to conduct yourselves professionally when you debate me. Because when you debate me, I will conduct myself, I conduct myself in a professional way. I've been doing this for many years now on the internet, and I've learned from my mistakes. And I do things in a professional way, and I expect people to do things in a professional way. And uh, unfortunately, many of these Dawa teams, they kind of move into kind of uh, Al Capone apologetics where they're aggressive and they try to get you off beat and they get personal and it becomes personal and, and, and then it detracts from actually getting into the scholarship. And um, I don't want to do that. I want to get into the work. I'm spending many, many hours over the last year and a half and I'm, spend, I'm going to spend many, many hours studying the Quran. And I look forward to talking to people at Hyde Park. And uh, I've got many questions that the Muslims can't answer. And um, I look forward to challenging the Muslim community down there uh, and, and inviting you to know Christ and, and to know the Lord. And I, I thank you for those Muslims that have engaged with me. There are some nice Muslims, some nice Shia Muslims that I've met, and a few nice Muslims down there who do talk to me with respect, who do want to have a chat. And I really appreciate that. And I hope that we can build a bridge. And I hope, I really hope that whoever you are down at Hyde Park, if, you're a if you are an Islamic debater, I hope that you develop some courage to get in contact with me and say, you know what, I want to debate you on this topic and we'll have two hours and it will be at this venue or that venue, we'll do it at this mosque, we'll do it at this hall, we'll do it on this platform and we will not cheat, we will do it specific time. When I deba deba debated Aquil on Yaya Snow's uh, platform, he cheated. Yaya Snow cheated. Not, not that Aquil, Aquil was a good guy, he was a great guy, I really appreciated him. Really, really nice guy. But Yaya Snow allowed uh, two or three of his apologists who he works with to ask me questions and so it wasn't me debate Aquil, it was me debate three or four other people and it wasn't fair okay and I find that, I find that with internet atheists and athe men, professional atheists and professional Dawa debaters that they can't debate fairly, they can't do a platform where where you're timed and, and it's specific time and you don't go over that time and um, where they don't do ad hominem attacks where they don't try to put you off in their group I, I, I rarely meet I, I, I don't meet people like that in the Dawa teams yet yeah, I'm a gentleman and I do things in a professional scholarly way because I spend hours literally hours pouring over the Quran and that scholarship I'm not able to de debate it to engage with Muslim scholars at Hyde Park because they're dishonest and they, they, they're, not, they're not willing to face up to the challenges that I'm, I'm putting to them and that's the way it is but uh, just po pointing out that oh Jason's quoted a few verses that's not even in the Quran but just remember he didn't have his glasses just remember he travels all the way to Manchester he's very very tired and just remember there's a lot of distractions going on. It's very hard to do scholarly work where you're used to being in peace and quiet and studying in, 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 with a table and in a room. It's very quiet to get that scholarship out when you've got people walking all around, disturbing. The, when, when we was debating two to, to African Christians, shouted over to the man and that was a distraction and then we had Tan and walking past with his big crowd that was a distraction very very hard to fuck and then we had a Muslim and then we had a couple of our guys talking they, they meant well they, they, they didn't they didn't mean to distract they were trying to do something good but we, we had a variety of distractions it's very very difficult to focus doing scholarly work when there's all these distractions and then at the end we had the cheating of, of Lamen when he went over his five minutes so picking out a few verses of the Quran saying oh Jason is uh, they're not even in the Quran so he's got it wrong just remember he didn't use his glasses and these other reasons okay thank you for listening
Uh, don't forget my website jasonbirdspreacher.com don't forget my new book on Sam Harris you can get it on Amazon it's uh, on Kindle it's called the Me uh, Under the Radar Meditations on the Life and Work of Sam Harris and then there's another book The Life and Thought of Sam Harris they're on Kindle and they'll be on uh, paperback soon where you can order it paperback that's on Amazon please uh, order those books and have a read if you're a Muslim, there's a lot about Islam in it. If you're an atheist, there's a lot about atheism. If you're a Christian, there's a lot about Christianity in those books. They're cheap, so please get ordered for a copy. Read it, talk to me, have a chat with me about the literature that I've written and have a chat about things, and uh, that's great. So I want to build bridges. I want to build loving bridges, caring bridges. I want to build friendships. Some of the sheer people that I've talked to in Manchester and in, in London have been some of the best relationships that I've had and I, and I hope the Shia people uh, would in, reach out to me and begin a dialogue and engagement. I don't know a lot about Shia, the Shia uh, faith, Islamic faith from the Shia perspective so I'd like to learn, I'd like to engage, I'd like to build bridges there uh, but they have been some of the most fruitful discussions because they've been more open, more friendly and more, more open to scholarship. They've, they, some of them that I've talked to have given me a lot to think about. And I would like to learn more and I'd like to engage more. I'd like to build friendships. I'd like to build relationships. I'd like to go for a coffee and maybe have a discussion and film it while we're having a coffee. Things like that. I don't want to be into this Al Capone apologetics where everybody's fighting each other. That's not for me. I want to be professional bring professional scholarship and talk, talk about it and engage with it. So there we are. God bless you. Take care.